alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Insha'Allah today we'll begin this series of lectures Nawaqad al-Islam the invalidators or the nullifiers of Islam Nawaqid is the plural of naqid naqid is something which invalidates or something which nullifies that is why you read in the chapter of tahara any book of fiqh once you read tahara purity or purification then comes the sub chapter of wudu wudu after that immediately comes what nawaqid al wudu nawaqid al wudu meaning what the nullifiers or invalidators of wudu things which if you do or happen they invalidate your state of purity you have to go back and make wudu again so this is the meaning of the word naqid is an invalidator or a nullifier so nawaqid al-islam are the things which invalidate or nullify a person's islam meaning they deem this person to be not muslim anymore taking him from islam to the state of kufr disbelief taking him from a state of belief to a state of disbelief this is what we are discussing and obviously when you say nawaqid al-islam today what comes to mind is the famous um, risala or treatise written by sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahab rahimahullah where he wrote the ten uh, nullifiers of Islam. Nawaqad al-Islam al-Ashr. The ten nullifiers of Islam. And that is what we'll go through insha'Allah. But we have to know before we start. There's very important things we have to know. Number one. The nullifiers of Islam are not just ten. The nullifiers of Islam are not just ten. In fact some scholars they said there are four hundred. They said there are four hundred. That is point number one. Point number two. You will find most of these in the chapters of Babu Ridda or Kitabu Ridda. The chapter of apostasy basically. Apostasy is someone leaving Islam, leaving a religion, going to outside the religion. You will find this in all the major books of fiqh. All the major books of fiqh. Of any madhab, whether Hanafi madhab or Shafi'i or Malik or any madhab. Any book of fiqh, the major books of fiqh, it will start from Tahara, then come to Wudu, and then Hayd, and then Salah, and then you'll reach somewhere to say Kitab al Ridda, chapter of apostasy. The things which you do, they take you out of Islam, which are many, like we said. But Sheikh Muhammad, he brought these ten, some of the scholars they said, because these are the ten which all of the others they fall back into these these are the 10 major ones these are the 10 major ones before we start though before we start and that book is um, widely available on the internet so that's up to you to do the effort of getting that book and then coming to benefit hopefully not just coming to listen and then you leave it here because what we are trying to do here is to to build something that we learn something many people they have read this book and it has caused problems I'm saying many not most why because they want to read and they think they can apply and that is the danger of reading or seeking out knowledge by yourself there's some things you can read by yourself there's some things you have to be taught and you have to be taught by someone who's following the right methodology, the right manhaj. There's many people who read this small treatise. It says, Nawaqad al-Islam, Ashr, there's ten things which invalidate one's Islam. The first of them is shirk billah, committing shirk. The second of them is the one who, who makes between him and Allah someone else whom he calls. Uh, then he goes to sihr, then he goes to the one who helps the Muslim. Uh, the one who helps the non-Muslims over the Muslim. And, and so someone reads that and then he says, Oh, so and so he calls on his Sheikh Fulan instead of Allah. So he's committed na a naqid from the nawaqid al-Islam. So he's kafir now. Or so and so it looks like he's fighting the Muslims. 
He's helping the non-Muslims and the Muslims. He is kafir. This is something dangerous. Something dangerous. Very dangerous. And that is why we want to start with this small introduction today. Which will be a reminder for others and maybe a learning process. Very essential though for others, inshaAllah. At-takfir. At-takfir. What does takfir mean? Declaring a Muslim to be kafir, to be non-Muslim. Applying the ruling of kufr. That is called takfir. Takfir is declaring this person to be not Muslim anymore. He has gone into the state of kufr. A takfir is declaring a Muslim to be kafir. In Christianity, uh, or in English you can say that now, they call it excommunication. To excommunicate someone is to take him from the religion. That's what they used to say. If they, if they wanted to take someone out of Christianity, the process is called excommunicate. So we can use that in English today, in Islam, called takfir that. Maybe. Allahu A'lam. But takfir is declaring the ruling of kufr on a, on a Muslim. Major points about takfir. Many problems you see today happening to the Muslims is about this issue. Now, this introduction, like I said, is very essential. We'll start with the major points on takfir. Major points on takfir. Number one. At takfir is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. At takfir is the right of Allah. Meaning, the one whom Allah declares to be kafir, then we say he is kafir. And that is through his book or through the, the authentic sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At-takfir is the right of Allah. Because this religion is the religion of Allah. So he is the one who decides what is wrong and what is right. Point number one. So it is not for anyone to base on his whims or desires or his personal emotions. Takfir. Just because you like, don't like someone and you see him drinking water, instead of using his right hand, he's using his left hand. You say, oh, he's become kafir. No. At takfir is the right of Allah. Number one. So what Allah has termed or deemed or mentioned or judged that this is kufr, then you say this is kufr. That is in the Quran or in the Sunnah. That is point number one. Point number two. Point number two. We have to know this word kufr itself. It is used in the Sharia with two meanings. Kufrul Akbar and Kufrul Asghar. Major Kufr and Minor Kufr. Just like Shirk. Shirk is used in the Sharia in the same way. A shirk al akbar wa shirk al asghar. Major shirk which takes you out of Islam and minor shirk which does not take you out of Islam. Just like nifaq, hypocrisy, it is used in the Sharia with these meanings also. And nifaq al akbar, major hypocrisy which deems you not a Muslim anymore. And an nifaq al asghar minor nifaq. These three terms are the terms which have been used in the Sharia to declare someone to be non-Muslim. Kufr and what? Shirk and nifaq. What you have to know in the Sharia, they are used in the Sharia. When you say in the Sharia, we mean what? The Quran and the Sunnah. They are used with these two meanings. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it and it means kufr al-akbar. Yes, major kufr. When you say major kufr, it means what? It is the kufr which takes you out of Islam. You're no longer a Muslim. And sometimes Allah calls something a sin. He calls it kufr. Because of how evil it is. Because of how obscene it is. Because of how dangerous it is. 
But it does not mean you are a non-Muslim. You are still a Muslim. But you have committed a dangerous, evil, obscene sin. Which most likely will lead you. Will lead you to major kufr. But this itself is not major kufr. And likewise for shirk. Something which Allah has called shirk. Meaning shirk al-akbar. Major shirk. It takes you out of Islam. You're no longer Muslim. And there's some sins which Allah has called shirk. But they are shirk al-asghar. Minor shirk. Because of how evil, uh, dangerous they are. Even though you might do them, you're still a Muslim. But it might lead you to major shirk. But this itself is minor. And also nifaq, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. What are the proofs for this? What are the proofs for this? We start with kufr. We start with kufr. Are there sins which Allah has called kufr? But we know the Muslims have agreed. And through other texts it is clear that this is not major kufr which takes you out of Islam. But because it is an evil, obscene, dangerous sin, Allah has called it kufr. Anybody recalls anything? Mention a proof. An ayah or a hadith. Faddalah. Killing a Muslim. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about killing a Muslim? Fajazauhu. What does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about killing a Muslim? Give me another ayah. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قُتَتَلُوا فَأَسْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا If two groups of the Muslims, they fight each other. Allah says what? Make reconciliation between them. Allah calls them what? If two groups of believers. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, Sibab al Muslim Fusuk Cursing a Muslim It is Fisk An evil sin Waqitaluhu Kufr And fighting a Muslim is Kufr Kufr Does it mean when you fight a Muslim You become kafir You're no longer Muslim The answer is no The answer is no Why? Because you see the other Ayat and the other hadith on this topic, they clearly point that you're still a Muslim. That is why Allah says, if two groups of the believers, He called them believers, He didn't just call them Muslims. If two groups of the believers fight, they make reconciliation between them. What does Allah say about the qisas? The qisas of the person who kills his Muslim brother or Muslim sister. If someone kills another Muslim, There's qisas, retribution. Either he has to be killed also, okay? Or if the family of the killed, the victim, they have a choice of forgiving. Forgiving and they take the, the fidya, the blood money as you call it, the dia, afwan. What does Allah say about taking the dia? فَمَنْ عُفْيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ شَيْئًا فَاتِّبَاعٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَدَاءٌ إِلَيْهِ بِإِحْسَانٌ فَمَنْ عُفْيَ لَهُ Allah says So the one who forgives his brother يعني the family of the victim If they forgive the killer Allah did not just call him a killer He called him what? His brother Because he's a brother still in Islam Even though he committed a sin Of sin Evil, dangerous, one of the most major sins, killing, murder. But he is still a Muslim. You understand? He is still a Muslim. That is why when some of the Sahaba, Ridwanullah alayhim, when they fought, they never said the other group is kafir. When Ali radiallahu anhu fought with the group of Aisha radiallahu anha, he never said these are kafir, these was never said these are kafir. You understand? You have to understand. Very important. 
Another example which Allah calls it kufr. But it's not kufr which takes you out of Islam. Good. Another one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in Sahih Muslim. Ithnani fi ummati huma bihim kufr. Two things in my ummah. They are kufr. They are kufr. Atta'anu fi al-ansab wa niyaha. Racism. Racism. Looking down on someone else's lineage, someone else's family, and a niyaha wailing and screaming because someone died. He said, Those are kufr. Is it kufr which takes someone out of Islam? The answer is no, it is kufr, al asghar, small kufr, minor kufr, or you can also call it kufr duna kufr, kufr which is lesser than major kufr. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La targabu an abaikum. Do not, do not distance yourself from your own fathers, because that is what kufr. Someone who denies his own family. You know, we have some people who do that because of any reason. Yani. Someone who disowns his own family because maybe some people look down on his family name, whatever reason. The Prophet says that is kufr. Is it kufr which takes care of Islam? The answer is no. And more and more and more examples. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَإِلَائِكَ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ those who don't judge by Allah's law, those are the kuffar. Is it kufr, major kufr or minor kufr? Abdullah ibn Abbas and the rest of the Sahaba, they said this is kufr, duna kufr, minor kufr. You understand? Examples of shirk now, so that this point stays in our mind, so that you don't fall into the traps of shaitan and you become a takfiri khariji from the khawarij. Examples of sins which Allah has called shirk, but they are not major shirk which takes you out of Islam. Arriya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sarair. Beware of the hidden shirk. Like we discussed today in the khutbah of Jum'ah. If you missed it, you go back and listen. He says, Beware of the hidden shirk. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what is shirk as sarair He said, what? Arriya, showing off. That you stand up to pray or do any action of ibadah. Just to show off to people so they can, they can praise you. He is still a Muslim? Isn't he? Yes, he is a Muslim. Another example of a sin which is shirk. But it is shirk duna shirk. Or it is shirk al asghar minor shirk. A riba, whatever you say, it has to have a proof. Proof. The difference between the people of the truth, they speak with tr proofs. Otherwise, you bring a storyteller here. He tells you all the stories you can imagine. All the stories you can imagine. And you feel your iman going up because shaitan is playing with you. Lacking stories from nowhere, from La La Land. You've been to La La Land? There's crazy stories there. We call them in Arabic khurafat. Huh? Khurafat. Another example. Yalla, yalla, ya khwan. Quickly. Quickly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man allaqa tamaim faqad ashrak. The one who wears a charm, tamima. You call it in Urdu Ta'weez. The one who wears that string and he puts something, think it protects him. That is shirk. Is it major shirk right away? The answer is no. Not every time. The Prophet says, Man halafa li ghayri Allahi faqad ashrak. 
the one who swears by other than Allah's name, he has committed shirk. Is it shirk which takes you out of Islam right away? The answer is no. There's details to it. You understand? Very good. And nifaq, hypocrisy now. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al munafiqina fi dark al asfal min al nar. The hypocrites, they will be in the deepest parts of the hellfire. They are the worst people. The hypocrites, they are the worst people. They have been the deepest parts of the hellfire. Even worse than the mushrikun and the kuffar. But does it mean everything which is called nifaq, hypocrisy in Islam, means you are not a Muslim anymore? Does it mean that? We said the answer is no. There is nifaq which is major nifaq. Means you are out of Islam. Those are the ones Allah is talking about. And then there's issues of nifaq which you are still a Muslim. You are still a Muslim but you have an evil trait, evil characteristic, obscene, dangerous. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ayatul Munafiq, Thalath. The signs of a hypocrite are three. إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبًا When he speaks, he lies. Does it mean everybody who lies, who is a Muslim, he becomes a munafiq, he is out of Islam? The answer is no. وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ When he gives a promise, he breaks it. وَإِذَا أَتُمِنَ خَانْ And when people, they trust him, he betrays. Those are signs of nifaq. It doesn't mean if you have one of them, you are a munafiq, you are out of Islam. No. So this is something very important. What is point number one? What is point number one? We discuss about the issues of takfir. Umar. Takfir is the right of Allah. It has to be based on the Quran and the Sunnah. You cannot consider an action kufr unless it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah. Number two. We said kufr is of two types. Kufr al-Akbar and Kufr al-Asghar. Major Kufr and minor Kufr. Likewise Shirk. Is Shirk al-Akbar and Shirk al-Asghar. Major Shirk, minor Shirk. And likewise Nifaq. Hypocrisy is major Nifaq. Major Hypocrisy and minor Hypocrisy. Number three. From the important issues of Takfir, we have to understand you have to understand the difference of the ruling al hukm ala al fi'l wa al hukm ala al mu'ayyan the ruling on the action the ruling on the action and the ruling on the actor the do of that action is two different things. لَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي كُفْرٍ كَافِرٍ وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي شِرْكٍ مُشْرِكٍ وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي نِفَاقٍ الْأَصْغَرِ مُنَافِقٍ وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي بِدْعَةٍ مُبْتَدِعٍ Not everyone who falls into kufr becomes kafir automatically, no. Not everyone who falls into shirk becomes mushrik automatically, no. And nifaq, no. And bid'ah, no. From the most important issues of between Ahlu Sunnah and the crazy people out there today. The difference between what? Huh? The difference between what? The action and the actor, the doer. So we are going to discuss 10 nullifiers of Islam. These are the actions. You understand? It doesn't mean any Muslim who falls into those actions becomes mushrik right away, like I said. You understand? Do you understand? The difference between what? The ruling on the action and the ruling on the, the actor or the doer of that action. 
So we speak generally. We say the one who commits shirk, this is shirk. We say sihr is kufr, magic is kufr. You understand? You say dishonoring the mushaf, that is shirk, kufr. The one who prostrates to a to an idol, that is shirk, a kufr. And the other examples of things which are shirk and kufr. But it doesn't mean everyone who falls into that becomes mushrik or kafir. The difference on the on the the action and the exactly. Maybe we should mention examples. Why not? Mention examples. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, he says, Al-Hukmu bil takfir This is in his book, Qawaid al-Muthla, The Exemplary Principles. Al-Hukmu bil takfir Ruling someone, uh, passing the ruling of takfir on someone. Wa tafsiq And someone is an evil sinner. Laysa ilayna, it's not on us. هو إلى الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is based on Allah's word and then the words of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. فهو من الأحكام الشرعية التي مردها إلى كتاب والسنة. فيجب التثبت فيه غاية التثبت. He says that the rulings of the Sharia which go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. So you have to be very careful about them. Very careful. How many points have we mentioned? Huh? Ya Rahamkallah. Three points. Point number four. Point number four. Which is based on point number three. Not everyone who commits something which is shirk becomes mushrik or something which is kufr becomes kafir right away. Why? Because at takfir, it has its conditions and it has its obstacles or impediments. Ashurut wal mawani'ah. It has its conditions for that ruling to be issued on someone individually. It has its conditions. The conditions have to be fulfilled. And the obstacles, uh, they have not to be present. They don't have to be present. Otherwise, if the obstacles are there, it's an obstacle to the ruling. Conditions and obstacles, impediments. Very important. Very important. Number one. Before we go there, listen to what Shaykh al-Islam Nitaymi rahmahullah says. He says, فَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مُخْتِئٌ كَافِرًا لا سيما في المسائل الدقيقة التي كثر فيه النزاع الأمة. It says not everyone who makes a mistake becomes a kafir. Especially 
in the issues which are detailed where there has been a lot of dialogue or debate about. And then he says, وَلَيْسَ لِأَحَدٍ أَنْ يُكَفِّرَ أَحَدًا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِنْ أَخْطُعَ وَإِنْ غَلَتْ حَتَّى تُقَامُ عَلَيْهِ الْحُجَّةِ وَتُبَيِّنْ لَهُ الْمَحَجَّةِ وَمَنْ ثَبَتَ إِسْلَامُهُ بِيَقِينٍ لَا يَزُولُ عَنْهُ بِالشَّكِّ بَلْ لَا يَزُولُ إِلَّا بَعْدَ إِقَامَةِ الْحُجَّةِ وَإِزَالَةِ الشُّبْهَةِ إذن المجموع مجموع الفتاوى He says It is not for anyone to make takfir on any one of the Muslims if he commits a mistake or if he falls into a sin until the hujja, the proofs are established on this person and the proofs are cleared to this person. You understand? That is why we said there's a difference between what? What is point number three? The difference between the action and the, and the doer. The action is kufr. There's no difference in that. But this person, Amr or Zaid or Fatima, the one who does this action, first, the hujjah has to be established on her or him, meaning the proofs have to be established on him or her from the Quran and the Sunnah that this action is kufr or shirk. And not just taking the Mus'haf, you take the Qur'an and you give it to him or her in Arabic. And he doesn't even know Arabic. And you say, oh, we established the proof on him, he's kafir now. No. No. And then you clarify to him the proofs which you established. You understand? He says, and the person, Uman thabata islamuhu biyaqeen, the one who we know that he's a Muslim, for sure he's a Muslim. His Islam is not to be removed by doubts, shak. His Islam is not to be removed by doubts. In fact, it is not to be removed except بَعْدَ إِقَامَةِ الْحُجَّةِ After establishing the proofs to him وَإِزَالَةِ shubha. And removing the doubts from him or her. Because someone might have the proof. But he doesn't know how to understand it. And you have to know that's the state of most Muslims today. He has the proof. But he has a wrong understanding of it. You understand? So you don't jump into declaring someone to be kafir. Except after this process. Establishing the proof. And clearing the Doubts. Establishing the proof and clearing the doubts. And then he said, also in Majmu al Fatah, In the takfira, takfir, lahu shurutun wa mawani'a, qadatan tafiye fi haqq al mu'ayyan. It has conditions and obstacles which might prevent the ruling on someone individual, that individual. Wa in the takfir al mutlaq, And the general takfir which we mention, لا يعني تكفير المعين إلا إذا توفرت الشروط وانتفع الموانع. The general takfir we mention, we say shirk, this is shirk. We say this is kufr, this is sihr, this is this. It does not mean it is established on the individual except after the conditions are met and the obstacles are not there. He also said, فَالتَّكْفِيرُ الْمُعَيَّنْ Declaring an individual, specific individual, Amr or, or Hassan or Hussein or Ali or, or, or Khadija or whatever her name or his name is. Declaring an individual to be kafir, takfir. مِنْ هَأُولَاءِ الْجُهَالُ وَأَمْثَالِهِمْ From these Muslims who are ignorant or like those who are them. بِحَيْثِ يُحْكَمْ عَلَيْهِ بِأَنَّهُ مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ Such that you proclaim on him that now he's from the kuffar, not a Muslim anymore. لا يجوز الإقدام عليه إلا بعد أن تقوم على أحدهم الحجة الرسالية التي يتبين بها أنهم مخالفون للرسل. It is not allowed for someone to do that until you establish the proof on each of them 
the proof of the risala the quran and the sunnah which clarifies establishing the proof and then clarification which clarifies to them that they are opposing the message وَإِنْ كَانَتْ هَذِهِ الْمَقَالَةُ لَرَيْبَ أَنَّهَا كُفْرُ Even though this action he does or these words he's saying or this belief he has is there's no doubt it's kufr like we said. وَهَذَا الْكَلَامُ فِي التَّكْفِيرِ جَمِيعِ الْمُعَيِّنِينَ He says and what we are saying it applies on every individual who's a Muslim. Don't just take this because some people they say yes we agree but he only uses it for himself and his group. And his family. But anyone else outside. He is quick to proclaim takfir on him or her. But for his family. And those he wants. No, no, no. Ah, you have to establish the proof. But for King Fulan. And Prime Minister Fulan. And no, he's kafir already. This is for everyone. That is the end of the words of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. وَقَالَ الشيخ الْأَلْبَانِيُّ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ ليس كل من وقع في الكفر وقع الكفر عليه الشيخ الالباني رحمه الله يسيد not everyone who falls into an action of kufr it doesn't mean that kufr falls on him you understand meaning he's not labeled as a kafir he's not labeled as a kafir وقال الشيخ ابن عثيمين رحمه الله في الباب المفتوح الشيخ ابن عثيمين he said كل إنسان فعل مكفرا فلا بد أن لو ألا يوجد فيه مانع من مواني التكفير. anyone who does something which is which is كفر for him to be proclaimed a كافر then the obstacles of تكفير they have not to be there otherwise it's an obstacle. فلا بد من الكفر الصريح الذي لا يحتمل التأويل فلا يكفر صاحبه. He says it has to be kufr which is clear, which has no interpretation. وَإِنْ قُلْنَا إِنَّهُ كَفَرْ فَيَفْرُقْ بَيْنَ الْقَوْلُ الْوَالْقَائِلِ وَبَيْنَ الْفِعْلُ وَالْفَاعِلِ Even though we say this is kufr, but we have to distinguish between what? The statement and the one who said the statement. And we distinguish between what? The action and the and the do of that action. Something very important. The ruling of an action and the ruling of the actor, the person who does that action. You can also say the ruling of the statement, which is kufr, and the ruling on the one who says that statement. And also you can say what? The ruling on the belief which he has and the difference between the one who has that belief. Which leads us to the next point, point number five. Kufr, Ahlul Sunnah, we believe. Kufr, just like Iman, it can be in the heart, it's a belief, that's Kufr. Or shirk. It can be by statements. And it can be by actions. Certain beliefs a person has. Even if you don't say them. That is kufr. Certain statements. They are kufr or shirk. And also. Obviously. Actions. Belief. In the heart. Statements of the tongue and. Actions of the limbs. Kufr can occur in any of those. Unlike what the Murjia say. The Murjia they believe what? They believe Iman is what? Huh? Iman is just in the heart. So no matter what you do with your actions. As long as you yes, Iman in the heart. Then you are still a Muslim. No that is not true. That is not true. Ahlu Sunnah. We say kufr, it occurs in the heart by belief or by statement or by actions.
Point number six. Takfir is the duty of the scholars. It is the duty of the scholars. They are the ones who do this job of proclaiming individuals to be kafir or mushrik. By doing what? By establishing the proof and clearing the, the doubts. It's not for anyone or everyone. And when the people are not qualified, they go into this, then we have problems like we have today as Muslims. And this is the way of the khawarij. Sheikh al-Islam Nitaymi rahimahullah says, فَإِنَّ تَسْلِيطَ الْجُهَالِ عَلَى تَكْفِيرِ عُلَمَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا أَسْلُ هَذِهِ مِنَ الْخَوَارِجِ وَالْرَوَافِضِ الَّذِينَ وَكَفِّرُونَ أَئِمَّةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِمَا يَعْتَكِدُونَ فِيهِ مِنَ الدِّينَ He says, Sheikh al-Islam, the juhal, the people are ignorant, going about and proclaiming the ulama to be kafir. It is from the greatest obscene actions which happen. He said, and the foundation of this, it came from the Khawarij and the Rawafid, Shia to Rafid. Those who have proclaimed the leaders and the scholars of this Ummah to be Kafir. That is why they started with the Sahaba. Huh? Shia to Rafid. Who did they leave? They only left five or seven Sahaba. Only those are Muslim. Everyone else was Kafir. Ya Billah. Now whoever you see does this today, he is following the Rafid. And the Khawarij, those who proclaim Ali radiallahu anhu, uh, was Kafir and Ibn Abbas, was Kafir and Abdullah bin Amr, was Kafir and the rest. They, nobody's, they are the Muslims, the only ones who are going to Jannah. And the ulama are Kuffar. If you see people today talking like that, you know. from that group so that is point number that's point number five or six that is the duty of the scholars some of you are not even writing then you argue five six if you don't write how are you going to remember hmm? geniuses maybe you're memorizing everything hopefully وقال الشيخ الألباني رحمه الله ولهذا فإني أنصح أولئك الشباب أن يتورعوا عن تبديع العلماء وتكفيرهم وأن يستمروا في طلب العلم حتى ينبغوا فيه وألا يغتروا بأنفسهم ويعرفوا حق العلماء وأسبقتهم فيه He says because of this and due to this I advise these young people that they should be cautious in proclaiming the scholars to be innovators or proclaiming takfir on the scholars. And that day the young people should continue seeking knowledge until they grow and they develop in the knowledge. And that they should not be deceived by themselves. And they should know the right of the scholars and the precedence they have. Someone who's been learning and seeking knowledge and and delving into books for 40, 20, 50 years before you were born even. Then you come, uh, and you read Arba'ina Nawawiyah, now you're giving fatwas. If you ask one of them about Tahara, simple issue about Tahara, he doesn't know. Lakin is into takfir, yadam billah, a'udhu billah. And you see the words of the Sheikh, very important. He mentioned one of the main things of these people. بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Don't be deceived by yourself. That is the problem many of these people they have. They are deceived by themselves. They see themselves as the only ones. Those are six points. We pray Salat al-Isha and then we come back to the, the obstacles and the conditions of takfir. And we finish off insha'Allah. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك اذن اذن